basis points to 12% effective April 1st. Amid this backdrop, BDO posted 8.8 .8 billion in net income for the first quarter from 9.8 billion the same period last year, as weak capital market conditions impacted on investment portfolio and dragged the bottom line. Net interest income was 19% higher than a year ago as customer loans grew 11%, and net interest margin further improved to 4.36% from 3.91 on lower cost of funding. Meanwhile, loan growth remains strong. The imposition of the ECQ mid-March started to disrupt the operations of borrowing clients classified as non-essential. Non-interest income amounted to $9 billion, largely contributed by fee-based income and insurance premiums. Weak capital market conditions resulted in unrealized mark-to-market losses, primarily from BDO Life's unit-linked portfolios. Operating expenses were slightly lower, 26.8 billion, from 28.3 billion the year before. This was largely due to a reduction in volume-related expenses and lower policy reserves related to unit-linked funds. The bank maintained its conservative credit and provisioning policies and set aside provisions of 2.3 billion as gross NPL ratio increased slightly to 1.3% while NPL cover remained high at 151.4%. Again, first quarter 2020 net income was down 10% due to the Taal volcano eruption and the impact of the pandemic and the ensuing enhanced community quality. Looking at the balance sheet, total resources reached 3.29 trillion at the end of the first quarter, driven by customer loans, which went up by 11% to 2.2 trillion. Meanwhile, total deposits rose by 9% to 2.6 trillion, with CASA deposits driving the overall growth. Despite scaled down branch operations due to the ECQ, CASA growth was higher at 18%, resulting in a CASA ratio of 76%. Net interest margins, or NIM, continued to improve and was at 4.36% in March this year as cost of funds declined faster than asset yields. NPL ratio was at 1.3% and NPL cover at 151% as of March this year. To safeguard asset quality, we have undertaken a rapid portfolio review of clients and sectors highly affected by the impact of COVID-19 and the ECQ to assess provisioning guidelines. Our capital adequacy ratios remain comfortably above regulatory levels and sufficient to absorb near-term shocks. In summary, net interest income growth remains strong, although we have started to feel the impact of COVID-19 and ECQ in our other businesses. Our balance sheet, however, remains strong. Let me now shift to some of the measures we have taken as part of the expanded community quarantine. These are the highlights of the bank's operations under the ECQ. For our branch operations, we have shortened operating hours with skeletal crews, subject to quarantine measures of local government units. Currently, 80% of our branches are open. Skeletal crews are running our head office units to support branches as well as cash, loans, and payment activities, among others. To ensure cash availability, armored cars and cash handling facilities work continuously to mobilize cash across the country. For business continuity, we have activated dual site processing capabilities or team redundancies in the event one site becomes contaminated. Senior management likewise split among several sites to provide uninterrupted service to customers and at the same time safeguard employee well-being, we have provided food, allowances, and shuttle services to our employees during the quarantine. We're also taking steps to ensure the health and safety of our staff and the workplace. Temperature checks are conducted upon entering our branches, premises, and facilities. There are also additional checks during the day. COVID care is our special teleconsulting medical service for employees and their household members. We also launched the COVID health diagnostics, including mass testing using RTK or rapid test kits for all employees. 
With social and physical distancing in place, we instituted service upgrades to allow more remote access across different channels. We are limiting in-person interaction to transactions that require it. Regular disinfection of branches and offices are conducted to create an environment that minimizes infection. Retrofitting, such as installation of acrylic shields and changes of setup of the workspaces aligned with occupational and health safety standards were also done. Health kits, masks, and face shields were given to employees for protection. Some examples of what we've done. Testing facilities. So that was BDO under ECQ. I will shift now to the 2020 outlook. 2020 will be a very challenging year to say the least. The Philippines is expected to post contraction in GDP as the economy absorbs the adverse effects of COVID-19 and the ECQ. Among others, this include the loss of employment and incomes, repatriation of more overseas Filipino workers and therefore lower remittances, slump in tourism revenues due to mobility and travel restrictions, and weak trade performance. We are also wary of the second wave of infection. On the positive side, though, a gradual recovery in second half of 2020 and a strong rebound in 2021 is seen as a result of the government's fiscal stimulus package of $1.7 trillion, including the resumption of infrastructure projects, further cuts in policy rates and reserve requirements by the BSP, and expansion in medical and health measures against COVID-19, including additional quarantine facilities and rapid testing. Loan growth is expected to decelerate given the difficult operating environment. Among emerging risks is the potential impact on asset quality. We anticipate an increase in loan defaults due to the economic fallout from the ECQ. Some of our businesses will be affected by reduced volumes and consumer activities. Consumption will be impacted by an expected decline in OFW remittances and tourism receipts. We also expect a shift in business to digital. Online transactions have surged during the ECQ. However, we cannot yet do away with physical banking completely. There are some pain points. Businesses face capacity constraints from the new normal, such as social distancing, limited operations to less than full capacity. We also need secure processes for client onboarding given limited physical interaction. Currently, we can only provide guidance by phone or call center. To anticipate the destructive economics effect of COVID-19 pandemic and the enhanced community quarantine, we announced last June 1st, 2020, a major preemptive provisional move. We are setting aside 20 billion in additional provisions to cover potential delinquencies expected from the slowdown in business activities and contraction in GDP. This is on top of the 2.3 billion set aside in the first quarter of 2020 for a total of 22.3 billion in provisions for this year. With these provisions, together with our excess provisions that we have already booked, we are allocating a total of 170 basis points in anticipated credit costs for the effects of the pandemic. Allow me to highlight some of the key takeaways from this move. Number one, the provisioning level is a conservative estimate of probable losses as a result of a comprehensive review of our portfolio. Number two, it is anticipatory in nature. We are not yet experiencing losses. Number three, the bank's capital will not be impaired and the bank's capital adequacy ratio is expected to remain stable. Number four, the bank intends to continue with its regular dividend payout. And number five, the bank's services nor its ability to continue to lend will not be affected. To absorb such a provision without affecting our ability to carry on with business as usual, is a testament to the strength of the bank's balance sheet. We have adjusted our behavior and the way we do business to adhere to the new normal while keeping our environment safe for our employees 
and serving the evolving needs of our customers. We believe BDO will weather this crisis given its solid balance sheet and strong business franchise, placing the bank in a good position once the economy bounces back.